this textbook is just confusing me. Okay, welcome back, folks. I wonder how much time we lost. Five minutes, good. Five useful minutes. It's too bad. All right. Okay, but this one B, a slightly different type of calculation to do. So you'd start with the 450 kilojoules. 50 kilojoules, and it's saying, um, what is the change in temperature? So we need to end, um, I'll just say we need to end in, uh, I'm going to do degree C again. One gram to one degree C, and we're still using 50 kilograms. Um, let me do the conversion first. Kilojoules, and I want to go from kilojoules to joules. Those cancel and those cancel. 1,000 joules is one kilojoule. Kilojoules, joules, I need grams to cancel, so 50.0 grams. Just put it over one. That does it. Joules cancel, kilojoules cancel, grams cancel, and that'll leave me in degree C. That'll do it. So the way B is phrased there. times 1,000 divided by 4.184 divided by 50. Kilojoules, joules, gram. Oh, that's kilograms. Yeah, there's no way that changed 2,000 degrees. This was kilograms. Divide by a thousand. My calculator says but I'm keeping two significant figures. Yeah, forty four fifty is two. You see that? I put you to sleep. Um, so this is slightly different from the Hess's law and enthalpy, bond enthalpy and stuff. This is not a um, chemical change, it's a physical change, it's a temperature change. Real fast, you put down the joules as 4.184. This is still talking about the rocks, which is 0.82. You're right. What, what is it? 0.82. I'll calculate it again. Just so you have an example in your notes. 450 times 1,000 divided by 0.82 divided by 50 divided by 1,000. Um, so now my calculator says Ten point nine seven by six oh nine eight. I'm only keeping two significant figures because of that and that. So I'm going to say eleven degrees C. And I could just as easily say eleven K. They really are exactly that interchangeable. I do have some problems for those. That section is called calorimetry, but I didn't really go into calorimetry. I just described spe uh, specific heat and heat capacity. 
So I'll mean to limit the problems to that. Calorimetry 5.5. stick to I think 5.53 is the only one I really want so 5.53 I think the rest of these go into calorimetry So I might have to make a PowerPoint for these. So we'll do 5.53. Five, five, okay. Right now, just 5.53 five, in those examples I gave you. Maybe I'll come up with more. Um, so I will come back to enthalpy of formation and this molarity. Those of you that took chemistry before you remember molarity? At least the word. Did you hate it? Most students hate molarity, but it's because it's because most people are confused about moles. But it is not that complicated. Um, Problem like this. So molarity is a concentration so let's say I have a beaker and I might have mentioned this before but if you have just pure water and then you just sprinkle a little bit of stuff in it that dissolves into it, that thing that you just put a little bit of in there, because there's less of that than the water, that little bit of stuff you put in there is called the solute and the water is called the solvent. And that's literally because there's more water there than there is solid. But usually, it is usually a solid that, that we put into a liquid. And once you do that, it's called a solution. So just a little vocabulary. So pretend this is all water with a little bit of stuff put in it. I've got another beaker. And it's got that much stuff in it. Which one would you say is more concentrated, left or right? The word concentrated. Left. That concept is all there is, really, that, that molarity is. Um, except these dots represent moles rather than grams or individual particles. 
So just based on that thought, um, twenty three point four grams. Um, I suppose I should say this. I'm getting ahead. Molarity. Um, we say things like so NaOH is a solvent. Um, we almost always mean the salt. Uh, NaOH is the solute, and we almost always use water for the solvent. So this is a solute. But I want to point out this capital M. Go ahead in your head or in a problem. Go ahead and turn that into moles per liter. Um, we don't have a separate letter. Like when we were doing grams per mole off the periodic table to add up something like grams per mole, there's not some letter that we use, you know, like R or something. We don't ever do that. We just leave it as grams per mole. This M is superfluous. I wish it was never invented. Whenever you see M, just go ahead and go, that is, and then all the calculations are like everything I've shown you already. So never get confused by the M. Okay. Um, 125 milliliters of solution. So we have that. We're going to need grams per mole. To get moles on top. So I'm, what I'm trying to turn this into is some number of moles per liter. Let me move over a little bit. So I'm going to need grams per mole. Then the grams will cancel and I have moles on top like I want. And they're telling you 125 milliliters of solution. I'm going to want liters on bottom, so I'm putting this down here. But this is in milliliters. It specifically has to be liters. So I'm going to go, and that'll do it. Grams will cancel. Milliliters will cancel. And I'll be left with moles per liter. So the rest of this is just filling in the blanks. This is 1,000 to 1. And the grams per mole for NaOH, what is it for Na? 22.99. Oxygen is 16. times a thousand divided by forty divided by one twenty five I get four point six eight moles per liter. You could also write that as four point six eight yeah three significant figures. And yes you can also write it as Personally, hate the M because it's superfluous. We don't need it. Do we not need two sodium and four oxygen? NaOH is what we have. Right? Oh crap! I got plenty of sleep last night, and I ate breakfast. There's something wrong with me today. Caffeine. That's what I'm missing. Yeah, let's do this properly. What is it? Na2? So four. So four. Yes, we do need to do that. Two times 22.99. Right? Yep. What is sulfur? 
32.07. And 4 times 16 is at 64. I have a little app that will do this automatically. N A two S. S. Four. N A two S O four. All right. One forty two point zero four two. If my app is right. <clears throat> Your shit together, Embry. Three point four times one thousand divided by one forty two point oh four two twenty five. All right. Assuming I did that right, I'm getting, and it's still three significant figures. You could write it any one of these ways. If we're going to use it in a calculation, this is the way I tell you to use it. Yes, you can write it that way, but I admit I hate the M because there's no need for it. This is 100% correct to say moles per liter. Oh no, let's see if I got it right. Yes. Not as broken as I thought I was. All right. Um, yeah, there's a couple other variations on this. So yeah, it's the same idea. You'll just stack the units differently. Um, we're using Na2SO4 again. It's a piece of this. Okay. You need 0 0.350 liters of a 0 0.500 molar Na2SO4 solution. The word solution is really missing here. It should say that. Um, all right, we're trying to get to grams. So first we're going to say 0 0.350 liters on the bottom. significant figures is that? Three. It's three. And the 350 is three. Um, the M, I'm just going to go uh, moles per one liter. Duh. I really am losing it today. I'll stock up, stock up on caffeine before lab. Moving it over a little. So if we're going to get our units to cancel, all right, and we need this. It's grams per mole. I need moles on the bottom. One mole gram, and that'll do it. Zero point three five zero. Three five zero times point five. One forty two point zero four two. A calculator says.
and we're in three significant figures, so I'm keeping those, the five rounds, the eight. So that's the answer. You would measure out 24.9 grams on the scale. You put it in a what we call a volumetric flask and fill it up. Um, well, if you had something that measured exactly 0 0.350 liters, you'd put 24.9 grams in 0 0.350 liters, AKA, AKA, if you put that in there, you would have a 0.5 molar solution of Na2SO4, sodium sulfate. Um, there's one more variation on this. Let's see if they give it to us. 24.9, yay. I can do some things right today. Oh, yeah, okay. The dilution formula. Let me show you this. So concentration in molarity, something we use a lot in chemistry. Um, but the dilution formula, let me, let me find a problem. Suppose that works. Let me just write this down. Um, the most standard way to remember this So M is a molarity and V is volume. And the one and two is like initial, uh, the ones here are like initial and the twos here are like final. But I guess this works to say that this is concentrated and these are diluted. So it's this times this equals this times this. You'll know two out of three and you calculate the third. So let me find one of those problems. All right. So it's typical in a lab to, any given lab, the lab manager will make a big batch of, say, concentrated sodium hydroxide. And then anybody who's working in that lab, let's say, let's say it's H2SO4. And they mix it up and it's really concentrated. This isn't real concentration, but let's say they made up 3.0 molar H2SO4. So it's a particular concentration in this big vat. And you can go up and get as much of it as you need. But let's say you're doing an experiment, and it turns out you need 450 milliliters of 0.1 molar H2SO4. Well, you can get that. There's a certain way to get it. You get the concentrated stuff, you dilute it a bit, and you turn it into the solution you need. So the concentrated, you could also say, we say this sometimes too, stock. I guess you could still say diluted. But we would call that the stock solution. It usually sits in the stock room somewhere. So this is a typical way to get your uh, solutions. But um, I'm going to go... because I'm really used to doing it that way. Um, so notice you've got three out of four of these variables here. Um, any equation you have, if you've, got, uh, if you've got four variables, you've got three out of four, you can always calculate the, th the fourth one. Um, so if I did it like this, the molarity, that is the concentration, that is the moles per liter, M1 here, 3.0. The V1 here, that's the question. Everything else is given. 450 milliliters. M1, you need, you need for your experiment 450 milliliters of 0.1 molar or 0.10 molar. And the rest is just plug and chug. It's not any harder than that. 
what you're really doing is, well, let's solve this. Um, we're solving for V1, so you're going to go. So this should be a 2. Crap. And V2 is 450. M1 is 3.0, and you just plug through that on your calculator, on your calculator. So I got 15. This is um, moles per liter. I could put a capital M here. This is milliliters. This is moles per liter. This is milliliters, so this is milliliters. Um, if you wanted units here, just to show you how things cancel, those will cancel, you get milliliters. What that means is, you'd go to that stock, get 15 milliliters of it. And we will likely do this in the lab at some point for our quantitative calculations. Um, a volumetric flask is kind of a fancy round flask. It has a line on it. <clears throat> um, but just for the sake of argument here, let's pretend this line is 450. That's exactly 450 milliliters. And this is empty right now. What you would do is go get 15 milliliters measured in a cylinder. You pour it in your volumetric, volumetric flask, and then you would fill it up with pure water all the way up to this line, aka you dilute it with pure water. That's how you would get your 0.1 molar, 450 milliliters of your 0.1 molar. That's called the dilution formula. Shit, y'all. I just want to stop now. After screwing up uh, standard enthalpy of formation, I just wanted to quit. But we got through a lot. Um, I think that only leaves, I'll give you some, some of these to practice at the end of the chapter. I think that only leaves standard enthalpy of formation. That's good. So that's the only new thing to add Tuesday, I think. And I'll have a practice test ready for you Tuesday. So then Tuesday is mostly review. And I guess we'll have time to go over the test Tuesday as well. You guys okay? I need caffeine, so a little extra time to caffeinate before lab. We're just going to continue the qualitative lab stuff.